one day, I was just sitting at work looking at the internet and I saw that somebody had just set a land speed record on an electric bike. And it was uh, like 64 miles an hour. And I said to myself, holy crap, I break a land speed record on the way to work every day. And uh, I talked to Harlan and we're like, we gotta do this. So a couple months later, I went out and set a land speed record with Harlan's help. Not only did he set the land speed record, he, he broke the ton on it. The history of hot rodding goes back several decades and is littered with gearheads covered in grease and bloody knuckles with clothes that reek of gasoline. Throughout it all, the focus has always been the search for speed. Now, the future of hot rodding still involves grease, but there's fewer bloody knuckles and no gasoline at all. The search for speed is going electric and is being spearheaded by a new set of pioneers. I've always been interested in, in modifying the zero motorcycles. There's a lot of guys out there that are building their own, their homebrew bikes, conversions, are even building their own frames, you know, totally ground up bikes. And, uh, you know, I, th I have a lot of respect for those guys. It's great. It's, but it's, what I like is that we're taking what is essentially a, a production electric motorcycle off the showroom floor and we're modifying it. We're, we're, we're really customizing it to the, the customer's spec. The Zero Motorcycle out of the factory is a, it's a very well-balanced system. Uh, it, they don't give you too much battery, too much motor, too much controller. It really works very well for a street bike. When we come to the racetrack, we're definitely pushing the limits. And depending on what track we're at, we're going to be pushing the control limits more, or the motor limits more, or on the, some of the smaller bikes, we're really going to be pushing the limits of the battery. So for us, it's kind of about elevating the limits of all those components and really figuring out where our new limits are. I think depending on the, on the race track, we've also, or, or Pikes Peak, the event, we can definitely pick and choose where we want to focus our energy. I'd say since about 2013, we've been playing with suspension for the racing. This year, Zero Suspension improved dramatically on their street bikes, and it gave us so much more room to improve upon it when we're actually at the track. The, the stock bike starts with a Showa suspension. So that right there gives you all sorts of options that you can do. Some of the things we did to my forks, for example, um, it was pretty simple what we did. We revalved those, we cut the spring shorter to give it a little bit more uh, strength on the front end. And the rear was actually really easy. Uh, what we did with the shock, again, revalve that. but. This year we were able to swap the spring, so I went from a 600 pound spring, bumped it up to an 800 pound spring, and um, it's, it's a little bit strong on the street, but it's perfect on the track. It's a lot less expensive to hot rod an electric than it is to hot rod a gas, because one of the things that I thought was pretty cool, provided I didn't get hurt when something broke, all I had to do was take a piece out and put a new one in. Um, if you blow up a gas motor, I don't even know how long you'd have to spend fixing it, rebuilding it, how much money you'd have to spend. Track days have really allowed us to, to explore uh, the, the limitations. There's a lot of onboard diagnostic data that we can pull to, to really see how close we're getting to those limitations. So, so a great example of one of the, uh, one of the improvements that, that we initially did that has now worked itself into the production electric motorcycle is the larger controller kit. What we did is we removed the original 420 amp controller and we put in a 660 amp controller. And this gave us an extra 20% horsepower and I think it was 34% more torque. And finally in 2014, I think Zero caught on and uh, you know, they saw how popular our, our kit had become and they decided, you know, let's, let's make this a factory option. There's obviously a demand for it, so why not? And, there we have the Zero SR. So we started to dip our toe into racing in about 2011. Uh, Brandon was started to race first at Keith Coe, and then uh, CVMA. Mm -hmm. uh, 2012, he went to Bonneville, set the land speed record. Finally, the TTX GP came to North America. So, so we started really getting interested in, in electric motorcycle racing. And we decided that we were gonna set our sights on Pikes Peak in 2013. Unfortunately, a class didn't exist for production electric motorcycles at the time. But Harlan was told if he could come back with at least six bikes and sponsorship that they would create a class just for him. Hollywood Electrics and Zero Motorcycles ended up 
bringing six riders to Pikes Peak. We sponsored the very first electric motorcycle class in Pikes Peak history in the nearly 100 years that they've been running the race. And it was a huge success. We six riders, six finishers. We finished about middle of the pack, which I think was pretty respectable considering that here are a bunch of electric motorcycles with relatively new technology, and we're finishing middle of the pack with amongst a bunch of gas motorcycles that have over 100 years of technology built into them. So I was very excited about what we accomplished there. Some of the challenges I saw at Pikes Peak um, for our electric bikes were quite different than the gas bikes. Um, the gas bikes have the loss of power due to altitude and changes in the amount of oxygen. Um, all of the riders have the same challenge with dealing with such high altitudes and exerting yourself so much. Uh, but for us, there were things in the bike that we had to learn to deal with. Um, for example, the suspension in 2013, the first year that we did it, was um, something that wasn't quite ready for the mountain. Pikes Peak will challenge even the most well-tuned racing suspension. Um, and then also the fact that you're climbing 5,000 feet in 12 miles, you're, you're constantly putting power into your motor and just stressing it the whole way. And each turn is so close to the next turn, and so many of them are just switchback after switchback after switchback. You're on the throttle, off the throttle, on the brakes, then on the throttle again. Um, you're, you're really stressing every part of the bike. What we didn't realize is how much 5,000 vertical feet really is. Um, I think a good way to picture it is how much energy does it take to carry, you know, 400 pounds 5,000 feet up? Did we have the battery power to, to move the bike up 5,000 vertical feet? Even though the, that an electric motor is so much more efficient than a gas motor, you know, we're talking about efficiency upwards 80, 90 percent in an electric motor versus, you know, maybe 30 percent in a gas motor. There's two moving parts in it and the bearings. That's it. So uh, there's no brushes to wear out. Uh, there's no valves or clutches or anything. It's just a, it's, a, it's a very simple system, a very reliable system. It gives us a sort of a different approach to, to hot rodding a motorcycle. But in 2014, we decided that uh, what we really needed to do was we needed to address the cooling issues. In 2013, we came with some ventilated motors. We had some pretty good airflow through them, but we realized that the airflow was not enough to keep these motors cool. So what we decided to do is we decided to do some liquid-cooled motors. And so in 2014, we came back with a liquid-cooled motor. Um, we also uh, upgraded the battery system uh, so that it could have a higher discharge rate. So actually in 2014, with the upgraded battery pack and the upgraded liquid-cooled motor, it worked out a lot better than we expected. But just because those things worked out better than expected doesn't mean that you did everything right. The team focused so much on the cooling of the bike that they missed their mark on the gearing. So for 2015, the team came back prepared, fielding three riders on zero SRs. All three finished the race with Jeff Clark winning the electric production class for a third time. The battery technology really is uh, one of the key uh, areas uh, of improvement that have really taken us to the next level. Um, and fun, funny enough, it's consumer electronics and the demand for these, the, the performance out of the batteries that has really taken it. You know, if it weren't for cell phones and all these little consumer electronics, there probably wouldn't be electric vehicles today. I, I think we still have to see, maybe we don't have the imagination yet to see what it, what it means for us, whether it's going to be improvements in the, in the braking systems, two-wheel drive, um, maybe uh, improvements in the handling through some sort of gyroscopic stuff, who knows? But uh, I think that electric motorcycles are really going to open the door for the next level of performance a, and uh, uh, you know, abilities in a, in a motorcycle.